A soldier returned home and found his daughter asleep on the floor in the garage. He was devastated at the horrifying scene before him. Then he discovered the shocking reason behind it. You little monster! Get out of my sight! Chloe screamed at the young black girl. The girl, about seven years old, clutched an empty plate. Her small, malnourished body trembled with hunger, and her tangled hair hung around her pleading eyes. She hoped desperately that her stepmother would show some compassion, but the woman didn't even spare her a glance. She just continued doing the dishes in the sink. The girl refused to give up, though. She still remained rooted to the spot. Susan, or whatever you're called, I don't like repeating myself. Leave! Chloe screamed again. Tears streamed down the girl's face as she whispered, Please, I'm hungry. For a few seconds, there was silence as Chloe arranged the plates in the cabinet. When she was done, she turned to the little girl. There's no food for you. Now head back to the garage, Chloe said coldly. She snatched the plate from the girl's hands and called her a little annoying devil. The little girl had already exhausted her tears. She couldn't sob anymore. Her red eyes ached from excessive crying. She tugged on her stepmother's leg, begging for a meal, but Chloe's mind was made up. Chloe pushed her out of the kitchen. The girl scrambled and fell to the ground. Slowly, she got up and limped toward the living room. There, she saw her stepbrothers munching on turkey thighs. Her mouth watered and her stomach twisted with hunger. She inched closer to them, stretching out her hand, hoping they would take pity on her plight. Can you help me with a little food? She begged. Go away. Mom doesn't want us giving you anything. The two boys barked at Susan. She flinched but still said, Please, can I just have a bite, please? Go away. The boys shoved her. A little Susan had no choice but to head outside to the cold garage, which had become her home. She lay on the hard marble tiles and pulled a thin duvet over her body, but she kept shivering. As she cried, she hoped her dad would show up, but she knew that wasn't happening anytime soon. Little Susan was the daughter of an army officer. Her dad, Sergeant Charles, was a white man currently away on a peacekeeping mission in Ukraine. Charles and Sandra's love story began like a fairy tale. They met in elementary school, where they were inseparable. They sat together in class, played basketball together, and even shared the same circle of friends. Charles was smitten with Sandra's bright smile and kind heart. He loved her for who she was, and their differences only made their love stronger. On Sandra's 13th birthday, Charles planned a special surprise. He gave her a dazzling ring and a beautiful homemade card. That night, Sandra had snuck out of her house to see Charles. Shortly after they met up, the sky grew dark and a heavy rain poured down. But Sandra didn't want their moment together to end. She insisted on staying even after Charles begged her to leave. Instead, she grabbed his hand and they walked hand in hand in the rain. As they strolled, the raindrops glistening on their faces, they shared their first long hug under the gray sky. It was a moment that left them both breathless. Sandra couldn't stop admiring the ring on her finger, and she asked Charles how he managed to afford such a beautiful gift. Charles' eyes sparkled as he revealed that the ring belonged to his mom. He shared with Sandra the struggles he was facing about his mom's illness and how it had made him depressed. But he confessed that Sandra was the only one who brought light into his life. As they stood there, the rain washing away their fears and doubts, Charles knew he wanted to spend the rest of his life making Sandra happy. Little did they know that life had other plans, and their love would face challenges that would test their commitment to each other. But in that moment, they were lost in the magic of their first love, and nothing else mattered. As the months dragged on, Charles' mom's illness only worsened. To make matters worse, Charles' dad abandoned them, leaving Charles to move in with his aunt. Despite the doctor's best efforts, Charles' mom eventually passed away. 
It happened one sad, cold night. That night, Charles felt the ground beneath him give way, leaving him stumbling through a sea of despair. He ran from the hospital, his legs pumping furiously, as if escaping the pain that chased him like a relentless shadow. The only person he wanted to see at that moment was Sandra, his one true love. When he got to her house, he went straight to her window and began throwing pebbles to wake her. Seconds later, Charles heard Sandra's sleepy voice. Charles, it's so late. What are you doing here? My dad mustn't see you, she panicked. Charles' next words tumbled out between sobs. My mom, she didn't make it. She's dead. Mom is gone, Sandra. Mom is gone. Sandra's hands immediately flew to her mouth and her eyes widened with shock. It was already too late and the front doors had been locked, so she couldn't go out. She had no choice but to comfort him from the window where she stood. I'm so sorry, Charles. I'm so sorry, she whispered, her voice trembling like a leaf in Autumn's chill. Charles stood there, crying uncontrollably. Sandra watched as tears streamed down her face. Her heart broke for the boy she loved. Time stood still as they mourned together, separated by glass and darkness. The night wore on and the silence between them was filled only by the sound of Charles' anguished sobs. Finally, at 4 a.m., Charles said his goodbyes and disappeared into the darkness, leaving Sandra to her own tears. The next morning, Sandra's dad checked the cameras and his face turned red with anger as he realized Charles had been at the house. He had always disliked Charles, and the thought of his daughter associating with him was unbearable. In a rage, he grounded Sandra. For weeks, Charles was desperate to see Sandra, but she was trapped inside. He missed her terribly. Days turned into weeks, and Charles felt like a part of him was dying inside. Then one evening, his aunt dropped a bombshell. They were moving to a faraway country, and they would leave the next morning. Charles knew he had to say goodbye to Sandra, no matter what. He couldn't bear the thought of leaving without seeing her one last time. So he quickly changed into comfortable clothes and raced to her house. When he got there, he screamed her name at the top of his lungs. His voice was hoarse with desperation, and his heart beat like a drum in his chest. Seconds later, he heard Sandra's mom and dad arguing. Her mom, who liked Charles, was pleading with her husband to let Sandra see the poor boy. Moments later, the front door suddenly burst open, and Sandra rushed out, her eyes brimming with tears. Charles embraced her tightly. His voice cracked as he whispered, I'm leaving, but I'll come back for you. I promise. I'll never forget you, Sandra. Just then, Sandra's dad stormed out, his face twisted in anger, and dragged Sandra back inside. The scene was heart-wrenching. Sandra's tiny hands grasped by her father's strong fingers, her eyes fixed on Charles as she was pulled away. Charles' heart shattered into a million pieces, leaving him with a sorrow that seemed impossible to bear. Ten years had passed, and Charles' life had taken a dramatic turn. He'd enlisted in the military, trained hard, and was now a proud private officer. One day, while scrolling through Facebook, his heart skipped a beat as he stumbled upon Sandra's profile. He hesitated for a moment, his fingers trembling with anticipation, before sending her a message. As he waited for her response, Charles' mind raced with memories of their past. He'd never forgotten Sandra, the girl who had captured his heart so many years ago. Days passed, and finally Sandra replied. Charles' heart leapt with joy, but his excitement was short-lived. Sandra was in a relationship, and Charles' heart sank. Despite this, they continued to chat, sharing stories and memories. The connection between them was still strong, and soon they arranged to meet. Charles traveled to Sandra's city, his heart racing with anticipation. As he waited at the airport, he couldn't help but think of their past, the what-ifs and the maybes. Then, he saw her. Sandra emerged from the crowd, her eyes locked on his. Charles' heart skipped a beat as he took in the sight of the woman he loved for so long. 
Sandra's eyes welled up with tears as she rushed towards him. Charles opened his arms and they embraced, holding each other tightly. The airport faded into the background as they stood there, lost in their own little world. Charles kissed Sandra softly, tears streaming down their faces. It was a kiss that spoke of years of longing, of missed opportunities, and of second chances. As they pulled back, Sandra's eyes sparkled with tears. I'm so sorry, Charles, she whispered. I should have waited for you. Charles' heart swelled with emotion. You're here now, he whispered back. That's all that matters. At that time, Sandra's dad was late, and her mom approved of their friendship. Sandra ended her relationship with her boyfriend and began dating Charles. As they spent more time together, Charles realized that his love for Sandra had never faded. He proposed to her two months later, and Sandra said yes. They got married in a beautiful ceremony, surrounded by friends and family. Charles knew that he'd found his soulmate in Sandra, and he was grateful for that second chance. Following a stunning wedding, they moved to a new city, filled with love and a promise of forever. When Sandra became pregnant, they eagerly anticipated the arrival of their child. Tragically, Sandra experienced complications during childbirth and passed away after giving birth to Susan. Charles was utterly shattered. He sank into severe depression. At his lowest, he almost considered taking his life, but the sight of his newborn daughter Susan brought him back, reminding him of the love he shared with his wife. After the funeral, Charles hired a nanny for Susan. Chloe, a divorced mother of two three-year-old boys, took on the role. She performed her job with dedication and formed a strong bond with Susan. Charles admired Chloe's dedication to her work. Four years passed and Charles eventually realized he needed a woman in his life again. He saw no better fit than Chloe, who had already been playing a motherly role to Susan. When he brought up the idea of marriage, Chloe gladly accepted. Shortly after, they got married. Chloe moved into Charles' home with her children, blending their families. A few months into the marriage, Chloe began to change. She grew jealous of Susan, feeling that Charles gave his daughter more attention than her boys. She wanted all of Charles' attention for her children and devised a plan to remove Susan from the family. Chloe's feelings of jealousy turned gradually into deep hatred. Eventually, Chloe made a shocking proposition. Charles, you should send Susan to live with your grandmother, Chloe said one evening. Charles was shocked and couldn't understand why Chloe would suggest such a thing. He sternly warned her never to bring it up again. Chloe was taken aback. She had never seen Charles this angry before. She blamed Susan for his reaction and hated the little girl the more. Whenever Charles wasn't around, she would maltreat and starve her. She even wished Susan would get sick and die like her mother. Susan began living in constant fear and developed anxiety issues. Meanwhile, Chloe pampered her boys, treating them like kings. She filled their heads with lies about Susan and made derogatory remarks about her skin color. She told her boys to avoid black girls like Susan. As a result, the boys hated Susan and avoided her completely. Sadly, Charles had no idea what was going on in his home. Months later, Charles had to travel with the army to Ukraine for a peacekeeping mission. Before leaving, he hugged all the kids tightly and urged them to behave well. As Susan watched her dad walk away, tears streamed down her face, knowing her stepmother would make her life miserable. When Charles arrived in Ukraine, he called home, but Chloe ensured he only spoke to her sons. When he asked about Susan, Chloe lied, saying she was asleep and shouldn't be disturbed. A week after Charles left, Chloe did something shocking. The house had three bedrooms, a master bedroom for her and Charles, one for the boys and one for Susan. Chloe felt it was unfair for Susan to have her own room. One morning, she stormed into Susan's bedroom and threw her belongings outside. Confused, Susan asked what she had done wrong, but Chloe offered no explanation. She simply ordered the girl to move her things into the garage so one of her sons could move there. 
staying in the garage was pure torture for Susan. She had to contend with insects and the cold. During the day, she sought refuge in corners to escape the scorching sun, and at night she bundled up to stay warm in the chilly air. When the cold became unbearable, she would knock on the door and beg to be let in, but Chloe would refuse to let her in. Every morning, Susan begged to come inside, but Chloe always refused, threatening to throw her out of the compound if she was disturbed again. One morning, Susan was starving, having survived on leftover biscuits for days, and her stomach ached. That day, the smell of fried turkeys wafted into the garage, and Susan craved it desperately. Summoning her courage, she went into the house. Her stepbrothers laughed at her when they saw her, but Susan ignored them and headed straight to the kitchen. Susan pulled out a plate and begged her stepmother for food. Chloe ignored her at first, hoping she would leave, but Susan, desperate, continued begging. Chloe finally screamed at her to leave, but Susan stood her ground. Enraged, Chloe snatched the plate from her and threw her out of the kitchen. Susan then turned to her stepbrothers, hoping for some compassion, but they reacted exactly as she expected, offering no help. Susan was severely hungry, so she took a big risk. She ran to the neighbor, Gregory's house, and begged for food. Gregory, a friend of Charles, had noticed Susan's deteriorating health since Charles left. He quickly served her a plate of oyster sauce and fresh oats. With teary eyes, Gregory watched as Susan devoured the food like a starving lion, even choking at one point, prompting him to give her water. After eating, Susan felt her strength returning. She thanked Gregory and tried to leave, but he held her back. What's the issue, Susan? You can tell me. He stared at the little girl with reassuring eyes. Gregory's confident gaze gave Susan the assurance she needed to tell him everything. He was in awe as he listened to the inhumane treatment Chloe had inflicted on her. Gregory had always suspected Chloe of being an opportunist, and now he knew that she was up to no good. Before he could act, Susan rushed out of the house, not wanting to incur her stepmother's wrath. Gregory knew he had to call Charles immediately. Reaching Charles was almost impossible, but Gregory kept trying. After a week, the call finally went through. Charles was surprised to hear from Gregory, and after a few pleasantries, Gregory advised him to visit home. Perplexed, Charles wondered what the issue was, but Gregory didn't elaborate, wanting Charles to see for himself. After the call, Charles contacted home. He spoke with Chloe and demanded to speak with the kids. After speaking with the boys, he asked for Susan. Chloe tried to dismiss his request, saying Susan was watching a movie, but Charles insisted. Reluctantly, Chloe took the phone outside and handed it to Susan. She barely let Susan speak for a minute before ending the call. Charles was deeply troubled by Susan's voice. It sounded distressing and left him severely worried. He decided to travel home but kept his plans a secret from Chloe. A few days later, his commander approved his leave and he boarded a military helicopter. The following day, he arrived in the US and took a taxi home. When he reached his house, he was met with a shocking sight. His daughter was lying on a pink duvet and she was shivering severely. No, what is this? He groaned. Susan ran to her dad as soon as she saw him. He picked her up and was shocked to see how much weight she lost. Her face was bruised and her body smelled unpleasant. Charles was horrified to see how his daughter had been treated like an animal. Susan took advantage of the moment and cried as she recounted all the harsh treatment she'd endured from Chloe. Charles was filled with rage, and tears streamed down his face as he looked at his pale daughter. He stormed into the house, calling for his wife, but she was nowhere to be found. He took Susan into the bathroom and cleaned her up, then made her some tea, but she was too weak to eat. Panicked, Charles hailed a taxi and rushed her to the hospital. The doctors quickly diagnosed Susan with severe malnutrition and placed her on intravenous fluids. Meanwhile, Charles hurried to the police station to file a complaint. The police were stunned as they listened to Charles' story. They immediately took action and began searching for Chloe. 
They eventually found her and the twins at a shopping mall, where they were enjoying popcorn and ice cream. When the police approached, Chloe was taken aback and confused about what was happening. Mrs. Chloe, you're under arrest for the maltreatment of your stepdaughter. The detective flashed a badge. Chloe was shocked. It still didn't make sense to her. As Chloe was let out to the van, she froze as she saw Charles. She desperately told him that she had an explanation for everything. She asked him to stop the cops from taking her away. Charles wasn't interested in hearing Chloe's explanations. He was furious about what she'd done. He took custody of the boys while Chloe was put into a waiting van. Determined to understand why Chloe would do something so terrible, Charles followed the van to the interrogation center. He waited patiently for the process to finish before entering the room. Chloe, ashamed, couldn't meet her husband's gaze and looked down. Why? Charles folded his arms and stared fixedly at her. I'm sorry, she begged. That's not my question. I need to know why. Charles tried to suppress his anger. Chloe's actions stemmed from her twisted view of love. Initially, she didn't hate Susan. Her dream was to marry Charles and have children with him. However, Charles wasn't interested in having more kids. He was content with the three he already had. A few weeks before their wedding, he had begun the legal process to adopt the boys. Chloe, however, wanted more. She despised her ex-husband and didn't want to be left with only his children. She wanted to have children with Charles too, but he wasn't interested. To shift his attention solely to her boys, Chloe decided to undermine Susan. She was angry at Charles for spoiling his daughter and worried that Susan might get Charles money. Unable to bring herself to poison Susan directly, Chloe chose to make her life miserable by starving her and allowing her to fall ill. Charles was stunned to discover how sneaky and deceptive his wife could be. It became clear why she had wanted him to send Susan to her grandmother. As he paced around the interrogation room, his anger grew, and he turned to Chloe with intense fury. Let's hope Susan survives this ordeal. If not, you'll rot in jail. He said that and walked away. Fortunately, Susan survived the ordeal. Charles apologized for leaving her under the care of such a wicked stepmother. Gregory also visited Susan, and Charles thanked him for alerting him to the situation. Charles realized he had a lot of work ahead of him with the twins. They weren't like this before. Chloe had corrupted their minds. Charles submitted his resignation from the military and chose to start a private business. He needed more time to care for his children. Meanwhile, Chloe was sentenced to prison for her crimes.